Okay, so now we're going to talk about the abominable snowman and yeti and uh, Bigfoot and swamp apes and things along that nature a little bit along with real archaeology and try to back up a point that it could have some basis in reality right here I am on my video game again and I'm in a place called Icewind Dale this is actually Karakonig and this is Icewind Pass it's a huge map and uh, down in that area you actually can fight against each other rather than the creatures and all the areas around here you can fight as the creatures if you ever go into there and you come out and you're fighting creatures and start fighting somebody that was one of your opponents in there he will be one of your opponents out here and so you both may start to fight a creature and start hurting each other which normally doesn't happen we're immune to each other's damage but uh, let me change myself just a little bit I'll go into this wear right here. Looks a little more appropriate for being in there. I have my lion paw hands on and uh, my daggers that I use. But the reason my bow is sparkling so much is it's got vorpal to it. It causes extra crit severity and stuff. So it's like a, a harder hit, if you will, just for an easy way to say it. But uh, what I was going to talk about here was you know yeti and the bomb little snowman and things and while i usually have my witches thing going on because i like riding around on it, it's real smooth and it doesn't jerk a bunch and doesn't get old real quick and of course i have a bunch of these that i could talk about probably do an entire video on eventually on them like uh carpets of flying and we could go into that mythos and uh even a dragon there uh armored griffin that i have uh, autumn stag and uh, I think there's another form of it that I have here the sylvan stag this is the great man of the forest that they talked about and uh, unicorns which really I've done a video about in behemoth of the bible and so on and it tracks back to the single horned rhinoceros and actually can go all the way back to the giant one horned uh, extinct rhinoceros that lived until the last ice age and that leads us into what we're talking about now of course and I've got sleds and an undead horse and oh I don't know even bears that I can ride and I can talk about the great bear and uh, the bear in the sky and Arthur and its stories too but that would be something different riding on dragons and war horses and how war horses uh, is something very different but we know about Pegasus, and Pegasus is a horse. So even though we know it's Greek and that very ancient, this Proto-Indo-European thing and this idea of having a horse to ride that could ride like the wind and so on uh, is shown to have connections that people don't try to make. But in something as simple as that, you can make that connection. For most people's mythology and their zodiac, that is a donkey. In fact, even in your biblical story, it tries to point that out deliberately in a way. And so it says, you know, Abraham had a donkey and so on. And there was a talking donkey. And then uh, Mary rode in on a donkey. And Jesus rode in on a donkey. And this is supposed to be that same mythical donkey, just like Pegasus and so on is. But people don't want to try to make that type of correlation around. But let's, uh, oh, I could ride a tiger. And I also do have a uh, manticore that's pretty cool uh, that I have here that uh, is a snow leopard manticore. And snow leopard's about one of my favorite cats that there are. But where I'm going to really go with it this time is, bam, a Yeti. Yeah, I got my own Yeti. And, of course, they make him look a little more sinister, uh, you know, and, and stuff. And giant Popeye arms on him in situation like that, you know, whatever. He even has ram's horns that go into him. But there are a lot of ancient tales about this giant old man of the forest that you would think of. And let's go down off this mountain here. Yeah. And uh, I'll get into some crap and talk about some other things. So, 
you know there's there's wolves but there used to be a dire wolf and you see these wolves that are over here and hell I'll just go ahead and take care of them easy enough slice hey buddy you're not gonna come over and fight zap yum 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 this is black ice you harvest it and it's some type of magic crystals and so on but that's more of a Dungeons and Dragons things these are a barbarian people barbarian raiders that uh, through the area and we've got to take care of them of course I can easily take care of them. I built up so much but ah uh, disappear body into the snow well and so in Dungeons and Dragons there are those tales too and you could uh, you but you would only have a Yeti uh, and perhaps only a Bigfoot if you do, if you try to put that uh, idea in inside of a campaign that was way up in the mountains and Yetis of course in the snow and being there here at Icewind Dale and I was on the tallest mountain there there's a cave that leads into here and there's a Yeti walking in and out of that cave back and forth this creature that's right here um, is a Remora, and it's almost like a, a dune type of a... Sorry, bud. But it's almost a dune type of worm, and it digs around through the ground and comes up and attacks you and so on. has a cobra -ish type head to him and uh, everything. And there's a mythology that goes along with that idea, too. But I'm looking at these yetis again right here. and whoop, Wolves that can't handle it. So we know that there's a difference between wolves and already there had formed an Eskimoid type dog, a Malamute if you will, that would have been something totally different. It's variations on a theme and indeed whenever we have a Yeti that we're talking about, it's a variation on a theme of something and they talk it, uh, about it in many of the mythologies like it's an old man and the old man of the forest and there's one there and here's one here but I'm gonna continue and miss that heroic counter there too because I'm talking and I wish this heroic encounter would show up here I need it for one of my weekly campaigns and it seems to be broken right now whenever they tried to attach it to a legacy campaign but that's another gaming issue so this snow version here is found and a lot of people, I guess, would only know this from, like, um, kids' movies, maybe even, you know, and Monsters, Inc., and the Abominable Snowman that's there, and Don't Eat Yellow Snow, and all that type of stuff. And they might have heard, of course, of Bigfoot, but where do these original stories come out of that rippled all the way down to today? Well, Gigantopithecus is a great ape in fact the greatest ape that ever lived and a lot of people of course you might have heard that name too try to relate it to Bigfoot but also you might know in uh, fossil circles and so on that there is this Gigantopithecus and while there was a huge one that was about this tall seriously let me see if I can zoom all the way out in my look this is as far zoomed out as I can get whenever I run around this is about as tall as one would look. The problem with that is looking at the hip structure and so on, they would have walked around on their heavy arms. And if you look at this, it's very gorilla-ish, but then instead of gorilla face, it's almost got an orangutan human face that looks like it's half cat too. Uh, that's just for the eyes and then it's got the horns and everything. So they're mythologically now gonna throw it out, but he has a beard and the rest of his face is not hairy and of course that's the way Bigfoot is described a lot and even Yeti has been described that way is that he has a darkened skin like a lot of Eskimo people and so on in his face but the rest of him is extremely hairy and you could find somebody that was huge and that was wearing animal skins and especially animal skins that are woolyish haired right and yaks and things like that that are uh, alpine if you will and then be very hairy a mountain man looking type look 
and you could get the same effect out of it, especially if the person was very tall and so on. Now, if they wore a snowshoe, not like our modern snowshoe totally, that looks like a giant tennis racket, if you will, but just a larger shoe than normal to be able to walk through the snow, you could easily see how a story of these people that were giant are giants to the people that are talking would come out. Well, you see a lot of these Tibetans and so on are really right around five foot. Some of them shorter even than that. So whenever somebody like Josh Gates went and visited or whatever, and he's, what, 6'3 or something like that, literally looked like some kind of Cro-Magnon giant, you know, standing next to him and, you know, would have been about the size of him. Like the one, if you've ever watched Bigfoot Hunters and it shows Bobo, and especially before he did his surgery and got his weight all down, the dude was just massive. And they would actually use him as a graphy. He'd be like, well, how tall was he? About like me or a little taller and put his arm up. And he wouldn't have to go too much higher with his arm because the guy's just huge. I mean, he can easily touch the bottom of the net without ever jumping up at basketball, things along that line. But we would think of Shaq, which is almost a foot taller than Bobo, uh, to be a giant, of course, and uh, giant creatures. And in fact, that's where Gigantopithecus gets its name, uh, for Gigantus comes from the ancient Greeks, which led into Latin, which is what all the taxonomy names are all written by. And there's a reason for that. I guess I'll get into that in another video because I don't want to keep going off in left field for we were supposed to be talking about Bigfoot and abominable snowmen and yetis and so on. And uh, they felt like they had a yeti scalp and they weren't, didn't allow people to mess with it at all yet. All right? And the first time that they checked it out, that they did be able to accidentally dot, 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 quotes, put, uh, get a couple of its hairs, it showed to be a primate. So in other words, it was some form of primate skull and everything. And then the thing that they showed him much later was a goat. They also showed a hand and so on. But then in the descriptions of everything, it looks like that would have been something that would have been frozen. Just like Utsi and mummified and that they had this hand and this portion of the scalp from somewhere up on the mountain, but they weren't going to tell you where it was. And, of course, way up through those mountains there, I mean, that's, that's where K2 and Everest is and things like that, and it's, it's not to be messed with. These people have specialized breathing and be able to get oxygen much easier than any other humans on the planet. They're developed for that. And little simple things like that can show you variations on a theme of people, too, and you know, what people are capable of, not over short term, but long term. And then, of course, long term is what they go through, and long term how creatures change. But Gigantopithecus, I guess we ought to leave this video game and we'll get into a little bit of more just straight pictures of it. And something that's probably a little more appropriate. So you look at some of these depictions of Gigantopithecus and one will show them to be very orangutanish and other forms of them show to be very gorilla-ish and some of them are very mixed like this looks like an orangutan face thrown on a gorilla body so they keep coming up with those variations of a theme, you know, that, that type of idea, though. But uh, whenever you see a picture and, and it shows you something like this, that, uh, you know, you, you can't get a size comparison of that, but a person would stand up, they'd be about this tall. Uh, this depiction is, I believe, between eight and nine foot tall. And a lot of depictions show you something like a normal man just short of six foot and what a gorilla would really look like but that they looked very much gorilla-ish so they're not standing up like my yeti and all that but they are bent over and more gorilla-ish the hip shows that they stand up and gorillas can stand up and walk too but it's not their norm just like a bear 
it's not their norm, but they can do that. And polar bears can stand up real tall, right? But it's not the normal height when you look at their shoulder. You don't talk about a horse and what it can do if you've got a horse to stand up in France, which you can get them to do. You just talk about their shoulder height, right? So there's standards on certain things, but this here, if it stood itself up, would be about 11, 12 foot tall. And you hear about a lot of Bigfoots are described as being that much. Now, I'm going to try to get you to believe that there are Bigfoots, but if let's just look at this picture right here. And if you had a photograph that really was like this, and you saw people playing around and they said they had gotten it from up in Oregon, you would think, well, there it is, there's Bigfoot. Whenever in reality, what this is, is some kind of great ape. And it's not some hairy man of the forest. For they're orangutanish, and orangutan actually meant old man of the forest. So, even back then, pretty much everywhere you ran into, people understood that primates and apes were close relatives of people. But when the last time, or when is the last time that you could have had this scene go on that's right here? Oh, let me see if I can blow this thing up. Wow, that's not much better. Well, if you look closer at it, what we have is an ancient micro deer that's here, but you'll have hominids right here. So this is actually on our branch, maybe. And this definitely is not on our branch. But they do connect, and much closer, to orangutans and those species that we know of today of the great apes, if you will. And so those people would have had interaction, fear of them, things like that, and knowledge of them. Uh, but in, indeed, whenever we first heard of the gorilla, I don't know if you, if you know the story of that, but it was not believed at all. And then even after that was known, the silverback and mountain gorilla, it was believed, oh, you're talking about some kind of Bigfoot bullcrap and da-da-da. And they go up there and they go, no, that's a silverback gorilla right there. And a lot of people, and Jane Goodall and everything, if, if y'all know any of that, have ever seen any of that type of depiction. But, lo and behold, and I'm not trying to tell you the Patterson footage is real, and that to have these mountain hicks that come up with this idea, and yeah, I've seen it, you know, uh, that, that I would believe in them anymore then I would expect you to believe in me, even though you, what you've seen in my videos, if I was to tell you now that I had seen one of these things, I wonder how much belief and trust I would have in people. And I'm not telling you that I did, and I'm, and I'm not telling you that I didn't, but I haven't. Um, I've talked to a couple people that say they knew people that have seen it, so on, and down a thread, and I've watched a lot of videos about it and everything, and, you know, during my tracking down of many multi-topics that go together. But what goes together with this, and let me uh, just go back to these images here, what goes together with this is the knowledge that uh, this thing, and uh, this is no BS, if you will, that, I, what, God, I wish I could get that just a little bigger wow so much bigger and but you can see how big it is the concept trying to be shown here is a six foot tall man now this version is only about nine foot tall and what I wish I could show you there is that if they had Shaq Shaq's arm, uh, head would come right up to its armpit so he would look up at Shaq, Shaq would look up at it, and it's really not much more than that. But just that size difference in girth is a massive, massive thing. But look how he's holding his arm up. Well, his arm holding up is actually the height of what Gigantopithecus blocki was. And this is the shorter form, not the shortest form. The shortest form was just about seven foot. This is the one that's about nine foot. 
okay? So it really has that scaling between him and Chaganit and everything else. But about nine foot, and people keep claiming that this is the one. And the thing about it is, is they have found teeth of this creature all the way back to, now check this number, 11,700 years ago. Yeah, if you looked into Gigantopithecus, they usually talk about Glocki and a few others, and them dying off at 100,000 years ago, few specimens reach closer to this time. And while that may be pretty much reality, just like we thought Homo sapiens were only about 150,000 years old whenever I was a kid, and then Diggs proven in dating and multitask dating figured out, no, this is 225, 223,000 years. Then the uh, cave in northern Morocco punched out one that was an older date than that. And then now, just recently, and I've done a video about it, and it's actually info is in a couple of videos, showed 315,000 years ago, and that's modern Homo sapiens. So it's pretty much doubled the age of what there is. And, and two of those are from inside that same cave below level of each other and I've said quite frequently if they dug America deeper than Clovis quite often they find non-Clovis but they're not really told to that they have this narrative that uh, America was this blah 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 land well I just showed you recently there was a camel that's from uh, the Americas and it's snow feet that he has and not sand feet he's recent addition to the sand area and they still show that woolly fur it's like there was a woolly rhino, right? And a rhino in the Americas, buffalo in both. People, some people don't believe that there even is still buffalo, uh, not in just North America, but also in Northern Europe and the bison that are there, too, closely related. So you have that type of effect. But 11,700 years ago, with a margin of 800 years, give or take, up or down, is a able to also encompass this creature having even just dying out at the end of the last ice age. Now, whenever they talk about them dying out before, that would have been the ice age before the ice age, right? There's been a series of them like a pulse, and we're damn where we'll do another cold pulse, and people keep talking about global warming. But, you know, shark's teeth here in Texas come all the way up till near Dallas, and uh, you can easily find them in other fossils too, but the shark teeth show you whenever, you know, global maximum of water meltdown that it happened many times before and before humans were ever even on the planet. Comes all the way up to there when the, everything in the world is pretty much melted away, all of Iceland and those things. So it shows you the capability. And I wonder, the, the strange thing would be now, if it did happen again, which is going to take thousands of years probably before we get there, and I really think that before and or when we get there, it's going to rapidly go into another ice age and go right back where it was, and everybody's going to kind of get caught off guard. Just like the same thing with the, all those movies and everything about an asteroid hitting the world and causing a problem and things, and yet people are still kind of like, duh, and sitting around waiting for it whenever... Halloween, Day of the Dead, and all of those, and this story that showed through Mithra, killing at Taurus's shoulder, and da-da-da, that all goes with this whole idea of the meteor storm that happens then, and it goes back to, sometimes when that meteor storm, we go through much worse than this, and they want to let people know that, and distinctly, they keep showing it, but it's been kind of dulled out, and everybody talks, oh, Halloween. There's another one earlier in the year, but it's coming from near the sun, so we would never even know it. Or it wouldn't be at night time. Like if you shot off fireworks during the day, and you don't really see anything. That type thing. There's just a big bang, isn't there? So, Gigantopithecus. Um, it reaches to that point in time, and there are forms of its skull, and I wish I could see... Yeah, okay, here we go. So here we can see the forms of it, right? And this is a redo of Cro-Magnon men, not modern men. So it has just a slightly bigger brain case. So uh, yeah, it's a, try to give a visual example. But here is the one they were talking about. 
and we were just showing a minute ago, and then here is the one that uh, is professed just from a few pieces they found though in forms of it. And this is through most of Asia too, by the way, the out of Africa and all that type thing. Uh, I don't know if they're going to try to still keep that in a, intact whenever it's all pretty much shattered away. You have to go from the first hominids that come out of Africa and end up being these creatures or whenever they form different and then you get mongoloids and caucasians and all these things that didn't even form out of primordial hominids not even in Africa so it seems to have a strange you know when where what type thing if you go with that and it looks like it's a quite more complex than it originally even looked in any form of its telling but you can also see this has a much wider cheekage than like this does and in this they want you to believe it's not necessarily so gorilla but it might be more orangutanish crossy looking gorilla orangutan orangutan looking type thing so whenever you saw what it was at the jungle book and uh, they showed you um, this depiction that looks like this if you will and um, that would be just about right now, well it looks oversized it's wrong just like my Yeti that I have looks oversized and wrong well no look at there actually was a creature on that planet that was that tall and this tall but it's just not that last one that last one was that nine foot tall type right whereas if this guy was to not be orangutan all hunched over and you stretched him out real good yeah, yeah this kid's what four foot tall at best and this guy's gonna push 12 but they try to make him look a little like King Kong in an orangutan form right so you know I told you King Kong and all those things that that attaches it to this idea we have these primates on certain islands and so they've tried to have, um, oh, it actually shot it to the actual picture. Hmm. Uh, they've tried to have stories about ideas like this. And King Kong was on this special island, right? And uh, that's kind of recreating this same constant idea if you will and uh, just a moment I'll get it back on wow so I lost it didn't I maybe I can go back in the other one which should have been there's the picture and so it should have been do 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 ow there so jungle book you know and Ooh, 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 I want to be like you, ooh, ooh, right? So, that has a lot of strangeness to do with it, too. And the idea of King Kong come to a strange world and a modern thing doesn't understand it at all. Uh, tries to make his reality back into what it was. And the, the cops kill him at the very end. Everybody walks out and looks at him in the street. Uh, that has weird connotations to it and of course on a modern day something like that probably would never even be formed at least not along that line but imagine if you will and uh, here's the skeleton of the nine footer god I know these pictures are small to y'all here's the skeleton of the nine footer right and uh, that nine footer didn't get really over much nine ten foot and then there was this one that got over twelve the hip to it though shows that it walked around and it was more gorilla-ish and it could stand up and uh, when it goes to fight or do so that it probably would do so but it wouldn't have been something that looked like Bigfoot walking around god these pictures are so small I've got to get another program up going there's another skull formation of the three showing you it, but it would have looked more mm, there this one puts it as directly gorilla giant gorilla right this one puts it as giant orangutan and so you see this variation on a the theme well uh, 
Australopithecus had a variation in the theme on itself. But I believe, as a lot of people do, that it would have looked a little more like this when challenged and stood up. God, I wish I could blow this up. We. That it would look like this. And here's these early hominids. This would have been Homo erectus. We're talking over 100,000 years ago that would have run into it. And when they first talked about that and got radiocarbon dating going and saying that they came all the way to 100,000 years ago, we thought Homo sapiens had only lived for somewhere around 100,000 years. That wasn't us. It was after Cro-Magnon 38,000, 36,000 years ago. And then after that, we formed into our sapiens sapiens, right? Now we realize that it really seems Cro-Magnon, Cro whenever they finally got the genes and alleles, is still showing today. It's still extant. People in Europe and everything still have that today. So it's, it's modern man. And then when we would say Homo sapiens, it's so close to it, you couldn't tell the difference. In fact, more modern depictions of Neanderthal doesn't look like Fred Flintstone. Well, no, actually, I'm sorry. It looks more like Fred Flintstone and doesn't look like Ugg. But that's neither here nor there, and it seems like it's going to take longer than evolution before people come around to the idea of correctness and reality. But this one is what it would look like, but you can imagine that this thing snatched the end of this spear off that he stabbed him with. He's like, oh, and he grabbed it and took it off. He could easily one hand pound him into the ground, and it probably happened right after this moment. Although they caused enough damage and probably it ended up dying and all out of scarce in reality. And at the time, did this eat meat? Rarely, if any at all. Or was it a bamboo eater like we think of and a vegetarian and leaf eater just like a gorilla? Well, probably so, but a gorilla will kill you too, right? Real quick. There are other depictions of them that make you look like gorillas, like that and so on, and like this. But, and, uh, you know, people would say that original one that showed the guy in the white shirt would look Bigfoot. And here's gigantic Pythicus block eye a 10 foot version versus a little over five foot tall man and you can see the variation on that and gosh so much better and so you can take monsters inc and even though they talk the abominable snowman you can take the main character sully and then if you were just to take this guy right here and paint him that purpley blue blotchy there's sully and so in D&D &D, we fight monsters and in elder times people were not aware of everything that was on the planet we had not gotten away from it with a picture and looked how small of a little marble we're on although people had gotten ideas of course and I showed you that they know that um, that the world was round they didn't think the world was flat that's stupidity and if they got the people of the time right whenever the, the uh, coming to the Americas happened it would have been a farce because Sumerians and he uh, he well in Egypt of course because that's where it was calculated at by Greeks and the Greeks knew that it was round and he calculated it real close to the exact same size but here we have a depiction where people have thrown it together and done a little Photoshop cut this is what a giant Zodiac type grizzly would look like if one stood up and of course if they were hunched over it would still be bigger than it and blow it away so to believe that it could have whooped a grizzly bear that's King Kong right well the thing that we're not putting into scope here though is that there was a giant short faced bear in North America and its shoulder would have been about midway on his belly and in fact hunched down would have been very close to the same size and now we're looking at a tiger fighting a gorilla today just blown up right you follow me but at this time they had cats that were not quite that large and really forms of tigers and so on 
and so you could have seen something that would have looked more like this in representation and hard to believe it now with the girth and the size of a tiger the greatest of cats that you could have something that could have grabbed it by the leg and dashed it around on the ground like a rag doll right now if let's just use common sense if it is true and uh, well let's just put this up as a background while I'm talking here's what old picture of Neanderthal which is just a non-shaved man that's that drummer from that rock band uh, what's it um, yeah and so here's your idea of Bigfoot here's a real gigantopithecus what it would look like instead of having a small man head on giant body type situation and this is what pseudo modern man would have looked like facing it but you could believe the guy on the left was the people from coming out of the last ice age unkept or whatever at the time and so on yeah would you believe that there was a form of gigantopithecus that would fit the idea of the bigfoot on the right but was really about like the guy on the left still living at the time and was that big and people talk about how we have an innate fear for snakes because of what all's happened through our lineage that it's something ingrained into us and so is it ingrained into us this idea that this giant man of the forest this wild man type situation was going on and do we still have a remnant of it because it wasn't 100,000 years ago and people that weren't even us at the time but it really was coming out of the last ice age and uh, there's a good picture too that gives you an idea an orangutan which wouldn't quite hit five foot if you got them straight and then humans lowland gorillas but in size wise girth and then Chewbacca which of course is a really human that just has an outfit on so this was a person that was over seven foot tall very much like Shaq if you will and then what the size of gigantic block eye was see the shadow form here that's what we keep giving the idea to King Kong but you've got to over grandize thing and that fish that's only about two and a half pounds and about this big ends up being this big and it must have been 10 15 pounds as you get older and older when you tell the story you must have been 20 pound bass and if your dad was still around to get behind you and tell you he'd say it's about this big he was a little kid when he pulled that out of the water and uh, I don't know two and a half three pounds I remember a catfish I thought was it was about half as big as me so it had to have been a 25 30 pound catfish my dad said it might have weighed five six pounds I think it's more like three or four but you were only about this big when you did it Do you remember you started reeling it in and then what you did was you quit reeling and just started walking back and it pulled it out of the water and I, I didn't have any memory of that I remembered I caught fish he was excited about it it was my first fish I saw the bobber go over and Oh boy, and I yanked back on it just like you're supposed to and everything. I had a bullshit fishing rod too that he got me. Um, some old Zebco thing. But anyhow, um, that's a look and my thoughts of, I, I, I guess, on that. But we would have an innate memory, perhaps, if it was as long as... 11,700 years ago um, ancient Chinese secret here uh, that's one thing I wanted to tell you about throughout time Chinese pharmacists use fossils they found in caves traditional medicines they call these special ingredients dragon teeth dragon bones I don't know if you've heard about all this but it's in their ancient medicine well what do dragons come from and everything well that had to do with the proto-indo-europeans that were over there and so when they talk about they fight a dragon and all these things it was these people that they went into and it was their symbology and amazingly it goes right through it 
but what they're really talking about is fossils of different dinosaurs. And that this man in 1935, a June German scientist, came across one of these dragon teeth, which he recognizes the molar of a primate, one that had never seen be seen before. In fact, it was as big as a dice. And so in comparison with the ones that they had seen like them, they were like, this thing is huge. It's got to be huge. Eventually, they found a few bones and so on. Over the next four years, he found more teeth and jaws, providing the existence of a massive ape he called Gigantopithecus. And it's where it comes from. They talk about it eating bamboo. And even nowadays, we have this incisors like this, this fang, this vampire look, right? Until I dropped my first two, I had huge vampire teeth. I've got a picture, I'm smiling, and they took a picture, uh, and I got that red eye effect, and I say some kind of Halloween crap next to it in the family album, but anyhow, uh, most apes still show this same situation, and uh, just like we do, we have a certain set of teeth, and then you have these canid teeth, and then you have bicuspids, and then molars. And uh, there are molars that they have. I think there's a picture of a guy holding one. But this is probably not going to show up. Every time you reload it, sometimes you'll never get that effect. Here's a good representation of what it would look like next to a human. Let me see if it'll show these teeth. And, and it's how they get the scaling and stuff out of it. And, oh wow, God, the last page picture. How about that, sports fans? So this is like the original form that was found. And versus our teeth, it's like, oh, I don't know, 15, 20% bigger. But then they have found ones now that are twice this size. And, of course, there's your 12-footer versus the 8 or 9-footer they're talking about. And so long a variation of that. But what designates a giant great ape's teeth is that they usually all have these molars and the same teeth like we have. You have four little flat teeth in the front and then the spiky teeth. Then you have choppers behind that. Not like a dog, we have a row of choppers. As soon as you have choppers, then you have kind that grind, right? And uh, this shows that eating grains and things. And this didn't happen recently with farming type situation, but we were hunter-gatherers of these same type of things before we started cultivating for ourselves in an area we were migratory, just like a lot of these animals here are migratory as far as winter and summer goes. The problem is, is all these ones that they're finding and are talking about, whenever it came into the last ice age, pretty much wiped out, but only a few, and that's our idea of a remnant, is one that could have made it to the last ice age. For men, Utsi and so on made it to the last ice age. Why couldn't a hairy ape make it? into the last ice age and we find that they did we find it goes back not as far as people are trying to say but there at least is one form of it that shows that 11,700 years ago and this grinder molar which is just like ours a little bit what key points it is kind of got five points around the outside of it all of yours do back to the wisdom teeth and then they have this groove inset that looks like a Y right it's a little river valley that runs through it and it's very common and so that was the first thing that that guy key pointed and he said now this is a primate type tooth some form and let me see what it goes along with ended up finding a jaw um, if you want to get yourself a close look at one of these teeth are very similar and what it would look like, all you have to do is go up to a mirror and open your mouth real wide and look back at your teeth and you'll see what a great ape's molars look like. Now this isn't from our exact lineage. In fact, one thing I want to point out on the way out here is that the chart that they show you where it goes from monkey all the way up to looking like a caveman to us 
is not actually true and valid. For in that middle area there, all of those, except for one, is not even on our lineage whatsoever. It's not on our tree whatsoever. It's something that didn't contribute to us or even have things that live to a modern day in any way, shape, or form. And so each of those would have also had a primate, man of the forest, hairy type thing too. So as long as we've been trying to come out too, this has been trying to come out too. And in fact, the only time that they disappeared was right at the end of the last ice age when finally they went away. Is this that Bible story about there were giants in the land in those days and after? No. Well, that was the story of quite a few tall people over six foot running into a lot of people that are only about five foot and just like a basketball player per day versus a normal sized human five eight five nine ten maybe at the best going up to six foot nine huge person you know football basketball player there's a, a god they were giants uh, the stories of the vikings because most all the warriors were in fact, I don't want to get into the thing that there was actually a legion of giants that uh, the UK had once put together long ago. And uh, everybody in there was well over six foot tall. Some of them huge giant people and there's stories behind that. But that would be for a totally different video, I guess. Anyhow, guys, uh, so is there a possibility that just remnants of that showed up. Well, whenever you know this fact, it made it more reliable. And just as a kid of about, oh, 9 through 11, in my first studies of Bigfoot or whatever, and you know, trying to go into that as some uh, idea, you know, and the idea of the Yeti is just being a snow version of that, and then here's the leopard, and here's the snow leopard. This one only lives in the mountains. This one lives down here, and it's variation. It's on a theme. And it got me thinking, of course, and everybody else. It wasn't like I was in virgin territory here in any way, shape, or form. Had already come up with the idea, and it's the same thing. And if it made it through the last ice age, it would have a mountain and an Arctic form, and probably not a lowland form. Although there is this idea of this skunk ape that comes from close to Texas and a few of the Boggy Creek monster and things that came from here and tales of just recently too. So was there that or was it some type of 